Hello everyone, welcome to the morning after show, the morning after the night before. It's not the morning, it's now the evening. However, I spent the morning uh, in the airport. Just got back, well, I got back from, um, got back home about half past three. On the plane from Newcastle, we left Newcastle about 10 past 11. Uh, got into Exeter and then obviously drove back to Cornwall. But what a night last night was. Um, Newcastle United won. Wolverhampton Wanderers nil. Um, it's my first game for three and a half years, I believe. I think that, yeah, the last time I was up there was November 18 when uh, we beat Bournemouth 2 1. Many, many people remember that, the 18 19 season. Um, Rondon scored twice. So it, it was amazing. Um, obviously, I went up there in February, did the stadium tour, went in Shearer's Bar, I won the nine bar for a couple of pints, which is now Shearer's Bar. Nice to see. Um, but I had to come home before the match due to a family uh, family things. So uh, it was nice to go up there, feel the buzz of the city, a um, few beers in the airport, a few beers in the town before we, we, we uh, hit the stadium. Leeds' stand and it was class. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the atmosphere. It was unbelievable. Um, just it's lovely to see, you know, the positivity around the stadium. There's a little bit of frustration towards one or two of the players, or one player in particular, which I'll, I'll get onto in a minute. But um, just fantastic atmosphere. War flags were uh, really pulled out the stops. It was amazing. It was class, and I cannot wait to go up again. I will be going up again this year, without a doubt. Um, this season, unlikely. Because uh, the Palace game, I think, yeah, I'm working. And then, obviously, Liverpool, Arsenal tickets are going to be unlikely. Um, obviously, it's money, money, money as well. But, yeah, so looking at the team sheet, Emil Kraft came back in for Javier Manquillo. Apart from that, it was the same same as before. Obviously, Dan Byrne, Fabian Scher, Matt Target, Martin Dubravka. Uh, midfield, you had the usual suspects in Joe Linton and John Shelby. Joe Willett missed out, and they, uh, I think he's injured. I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot of research at all. I was I was just having a good time. Um, but Bruno made his home debut, his first start at St James's Park. He didn't play bad. And then you had up three uh, up front, the usual suspects of Ryan Fraser, who didn't last very long, Chris Wood, and Alan St Maxman. So started the first half. I thought was a little bit of a dud. Um, Wolves offered absolutely nothing going forward. I thought they looked quite comfortable in defence. But the first major incident was Ryan Fraser was down a couple of times. And after I think it was after 11 minutes, he was withdrawn. He was substituted. And I'll be honest, I, was, <laughs> I saw Miggy warming up and I saw Jake Murphy warming up. And I thought, oh, I know who I want to come on here. I did not want to see... Um, Miggy, Miguel Almiron come on but on he came uh, the rest of the half like I said Wolves looked comfortable in defence but we looked comfortable in midfield um, Dan Byrne cleared his lines Fabian Scherer had an ok game um, Emil Kraft discovered a nit nitrous oxide tank up his ass and he, he showed great pace he played well, I thought he had his best 90 minutes in a Newcastle shirt for some time, possibly um, possibly his best Newcastle performance, I would say. Emil Kraft was very, very good. Matt Target was steady. The two centre-backs were OK. Joe Linton, I thought, had a quiet first half. Um, John Joe Shelby looked, looked good, pinging those sort of diagonally curved balls in, in around, in between the centre-backs to the striker. So Maximum was quiet. Miggy played well. Um, but the star of the show in the first half and the whole night, the whole 86 minutes, I think he was on, was Bruno Guimaraes. Really, really good. I'll touch more on him in a minute. So the goal, I actually missed the goal. <laughs> I tried to hold on. Obviously, we, we had a couple of beers in the stadium and um, I tried to hold on and I had to go for, for a piss. And I was um, midstream when I heard the roar go up and me and this other guy in the cubicle next to me looked at each other and go, oh, is that us? Fuck me, it was. I haven't finished off, washed my hands, quickly ran back to my seat, and it was a VAR, VAR check. And where we were in the Leeser stand, which was right by, if you're looking from the Leeser's end, we were in the right hand side corner, 
and the Sky Sports people were right up behind us, and Jamie Carragher was like, oh, I don't know, because he was six rows behind us or something. And um, it was disallowed. I've seen the replay since. It was good little interplay, good um, little back heel from Bruno, and Chris Wood was on the floor, and he, he sort of volleyed the ball into the net whilst he was on the floor, but he was offside. So that, that was that. Uh, the rest of the first half sort of passed without incident. Um, we were okay-ish, but we needed to vastly improve. And I was hoping that um, that Eddie Howe was going to have a big chat with the boys and try and get them revved up again because we needed to change. We needed to up the ante. Um, second half starts, and the team that up the ante was Wolverhampton Wanderers. They stuck the first five minutes of the of the second half. They were very good, very very good. Um, but then we took over. Uh, Maxi got a bit more involved. Maxi had a frustrating night. He had a couple of chances which he, he he skied. You could see he was at times. I said to my brother who was next to me, I said he doesn't look interested. Um, let's talk about Maxi what, what, while I'm on the subject. So a lot of people have been getting on his back recently, saying he's not all this, he's not all that. He was at fault for the for the Everton goal. He was at fault for this. He was at fault for that. Let's sell him for fifty million. Alan Samaxman on his day is absolutely unplayable. He's struggling a little bit at the minute. Whether it's confidence, struggling with the system, who knows? But we all need to get behind him. You know, he, when he's fit, fully fit, fully firing, he is an absolute weapon for us. He, but however, he does not help himself. When he takes on one player, he beats the first player, he beats the second player, he beats the third player, beats the fourth player, then the fifth player takes him out or tackles him. And he's had one, two, three, four chances to pass. Um, when he loses the ball and, fall, and he falls over and just slowly gets back to his feet, moaning and manking and moaning, when the rest of the team are putting in a, an effort to chase the ball and he's the last man up the field still moaning. I know he, he, he's a maverick, he, he's an X-Factor player, he is someone who you need to give a little bit of leeway to, but I, he doesn't help himself in that regard, so I can understand people's frustration. But the goal, so we, we had chances, like I said, Alan Maxman had a chance, uh, Miggy had a chance in the first half, Alison Maxman had another chance. Then Maxi was free on the right, and he, uh, I think it was a, a shot personally, but it's a cross. A lot of people think it was a cross. He drove the cross in, and Chris Wood nearly got touched to it. I think that was a good move, but did he need to smash it into the box like that? He, he whack blasted it across the, the six yard area. Perhaps trying a bit too hard. Dan Byrne had a chance, Bruno had a chance. So just off the top of your head there, we had six or seven chances in the game. The goal came from a counter-attack. Uh, Maxi with a lovely little outside of the foot sweep round the back to Joe Linton. Joe Linton runs on, Joe Linton runs on, uh, plays in Chris Wood. Chris Wood knows he's not going to go around the goalkeeper, but he knows how to get the foul. He doesn't dive, but he, he forces the, the goalkeeper into giving him a penalty. Takes a touch around the goalkeeper. There's no way on earth he's going to get there, but the goalkeeper takes him out. VAR, again, the uh, referee pointed to the spot. The VAR were checking it. And again, like I said, Jamie Carragher was up behind us and about 60, 70 of us were looking to him and he, he was like... At first he was thumbs up, then he was like, oh, I don't know. Then he was like, possible offside, checking offside. Penalties given. I didn't know he was going to take it, I'll be honest. I, I did think... In that split second, I thought, who's taking penalties? We don't get a lot of penalties, do we? Let's be honest. Callum Wilson, primarily. But before him, Matt Ritchie. However, Joe Linton scored a banging penalty against Man City last season. But I think I and most of the crowd wanted Chris Wood to take that penalty. He had a goal chopped off in the first half. He's only scored once for us since he signed in January. He won the penalty. He takes the penalty and he took it and he took it fucking well. It wasn't right in the corner. It wasn't like the best place penalty, but he struck it well. He struck it true and it's fantastic. What a moment. We then, this was the 72nd minute. We then decided, uh, proceeded to step on uh, 
the tight step on the wolf's uh, throat for about 10 minutes, creating the, a few more chances, but didn't really take advantage. The last five to 10 minutes, last five minutes of normal time and the four minutes stoppage time, Wolves up the ante and Wolves played well. Bruno Guimaraes came, uh, they played well, but they got nothing. Um, Dubravka didn't have a lot to do. I think he made two saves. He caught the ball a lot. He dithered when he caught the ball a lot. Um, Maxi was the main recipient of frustration from the crowd, but Dubravka wasn't far behind sometimes. Like I said, he would he would come and claim across really well, but dither and dither. And by the time people have made runs, uh, by the time the defenders have caught up with him, you know, he's he still got the ball, it's too late. Bruno, what a player. He was man of the match. He was the best player on the park. I can't recall him giving the ball away. I really can't. The amount of times he received the ball in tight areas with two midfielders on him and he would just turn, play it, spread it wide, long passes, short passes. He'd show for the ball in, in, in difficult situations. He burst past João Mont Montinho two or three times, past the other midfielder two or three times. They had, had no choice but to foul him. He's tactical, Gene. Like When Wolves were starting to get a foothold in the game, he would get the ball, run past someone, win a foul, slow it down. Always available, made tackles, interceptions, clearances, passes, even nearly scored when Maxi went past three or four players and laid it on for him. It was a little bit behind him, but on another day he would have scored. Fan favourite already, but just a touch of real, real quality. A touch of silky steel, I'm going to say, because he's not one of these foreign lads who comes to the Premier League, who's very good on the ball and shows all the skills and the tricks and the flicks, but is afraid to put the foot in or shirks a challenge or, or, or gets rattled early and then fades. No, he's got a touch of steel to his game. It reminds me a little bit of Xabi Alonso. Xabi Alonso um, was obviously a Spanish deep-line playmaker, midfielder, who knew how to put his foot in, and, and hence why he had such a good career in the Premier League. We've got a real player here. Fantastic player. Um, Silky Steel, like I said, I can't go on about him enough. Uh, on the Premier League app, they gave Chris Wood. They gave Chris Wood the um, man of the match, but it was Bruno by a million miles. He was absolutely excellent last night, and long may it continue. Um, like I said, really happy for Chris Wood to get his goal. The defense is it's brilliant to keep a clean sheet. You know, obviously, at some points in that game, I think I would have taken a draw, which is mad because obviously we've travelled a long way to watch that game, and it's a home game against on the day a very beatable opponent. But a draw to stop the rot of three losses on the bounce, you take that, wouldn't you? You know, any any anything to stop that that disease of loss. You know, we're going to lose games. Tottenham were excellent last week. We were shit in the second half. It is it's life. It is what it is. However, to win convincingly, to keep that clean sheet as well, brilliant. I think Dan Byrne needs to be, you know, who am I to criticise a professional Premier League defender? But I think Dan Byrne sometimes needs to be a bit more modern-minded. You know, a lot of times he's gone for headers when he could have headed it on to someone else. He's just boom out of play, clear it, have it, sort of thing, you know. Just get rid. But, it is a good foil for Fabian Scher. Standout performance from me, apart from Bruno, I'm going to give the people's man of the match. <laughs> um, Emil Kraft, I thought he was very, very good. Miggy impressed me. I, like I said, I was dreading Miggy coming on, but Miggy came on and probably probably knew he was playing a little bit for, for his, his career in a Newcastle shirt. You know, he knows that he's may not at the time may not get many more opportunities um some of the chat i've seen online today is ryan fraser will be out for the rest of the season so that right wing spot is between murphy and almiron and um almiron in particular i think is one that was being looked at looked at to move out ship him off get him get, get him gone um come the end of the season so he's playing for his newcastle career now and last night i thought he did okay there were times when Kraft was marking their left winger, who was like, not dithering, but like 
sort of, yeah, playing little dribbles, little dribbles, getting ready to cross. Kraft was on him, dealing with that threat. And Neil Miron was just stood next to Kraft, like doing all this, just looking at him. Then it was an easy pass back to the fullback who would just whip the cross in. You think, come on, Miggy, you've got to be a bit more tactically aware. But he grafted, he put some effort in, he made some good tackles, he hurried, he ran when he could. Yeah, fantastic win, great result. Um, I saw Ever Everton beat Man U today. That's big. Um, Man U are shit, aren't they, at the minute? But no, great result, clean sheet, fantastic atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I'm not feeling on top of my game. <laughs> to put it politely but I feel better for coming home and having a shower <laughs> a few showers anyway see you later thanks for watching appreciate everyone watching this please like comment subscribe yeah see you later